penetration testing, bug bounty hunting, which one of these two do you actually uh, do the most? Uh, absolutely penetration testing. And I, I will give you my reasoning and even the differences for people watching. Um, so penetration testing is about looking at everything. Uh, say we're looking at a web application, which is mostly what bug bounty hunting is. Uh, we're looking at a web app and I'm doing a web app assessment and a bug bounty hunter is doing the same, same look at it. I might write you up for having the, the little nitpicky stuff, you know, it might be missing headers on your, on your, uh, your responses, or it might be something just like a autocomplete on a login form or something, you know, just really, really low nitpicky kind of deal where the bug bounty hunter is all about impact. They're looking for what vulnerability they can find that they can report to the company that has a big impact so they can score that, you know, that, uh, that money really is what they're after. So, um, for, for us, it's a lot more comprehensive where we're looking at every little, every little detail, our checklist is huge, like super, super detailed checklist, uh, where the bug bounty program is again, looking for that impact. For penetration testing, I mean, in most situations, uh, if you're working on a project, you're actually hired for that project and you know that you're gonna be paid for that project when yes. you finish it, when you send the report. But when it comes to bug bounty hunting, it might be a little bit uncertain unless you're really, really good. And if you find something, there is quite the high likelihood if the program is public and there's a lot of eyes looking at it, that you might get a duplicate, which is yep. uh, quite frustrating, I would have to say. Absolutely. Yeah, so for me, that's the, the other thing I actually wanted to touch on was that uh, pen testing is just a consistent form of money. Uh, so I can go charge a client X amount of dollars and I'm not ever guaranteed to see that return on investment when I'm doing bug bounty hunting. Now there are, there are a lot of posts like on Twitter, LinkedIn, you see these bug bounty posts where they get 20,000, 25,000, uh, even 50,000 I've seen before where that's insane and it drives a lot of people to this market and there's people even in like the, the US cost of living is high, right? So if there's people in countries where the cost of living is low, where even if they got a half of that or a third of that or fourth of that, it's a really good payday. Uh, so you have to weigh your own personal return on investment for me, pen testing is just consistent. I know what I'm going to make at the end of the day. And I might sit with a bug bounty and try for 40 hours or 80 hours and come up with nothing or come up with $500. And uh, how many big scores am I going to get that are 20 to 25,000 at a time where it's really going to be worth it to me? And I, I would say even then there's maybe 1% of the bug bounty crowd is making over a hundred or $200,000 a year. It's very rare because they just now had their first five or six millionaires and they've been around for right. four or five years. So if you do the math, that's $200,000 a year. And you've got, you've got people like, you know, a uh, doggy G who's got like 800 or $900,000 he made in one year last year. That's awesome. But that's a, that's an exception to the norm. And somebody who's been at this for 20 years, like he is a old school hacker that's been doing this forever. So to, to really set those expectations, when you're coming into it, you can't expect to see that. That's what's posted. That's what gets shared the most. But at the same time, you have to be expecting to find nothing or to find $50, $200, something on the low end as well. So the, the, for me, the pen testing return on investment is just more, more consistent. If you want to gain an edge over other cybersecurity professionals, take my Python for pen testers course and uh, learn how to leverage the power of Python in penetration testing and cybersecurity link in the description uh yeah the idea is not to like put down or to uh, discourage people who are into bug bounty hunting right. the perspective and the reality is that you only see the the successes only the yep. successes are are getting shared so that's maybe probably uh, maybe like five percent or even less of the total number of people who are working on bug bounties that are actually making 95% of the money. So right. you have to view things into perspectives. I love, uh, I love bug bounty hunting and I'm actually doing it quite a lot right now. But I would say that it isn't mostly for the money, but for the actual process itself and for actually getting much more knowledge and experience into that. Mm -hmm. But if I would be, if I am, uh, if I am to pick 
from a project in terms of bug bounties or a penetration test, I would be inclined to go with the penetration test most of the time and leave the bug bounty as something that's a side yep. that I could work on uh, like as a side gig. Yep. It's a fantastic job to, like you said, to sharpen your skills, learn new tricks and trades. I've learned so much from bug bounty hunting and just watching other people do it, you know, uh, but it's it's not that main source of income, but it's something like you said you can do on the side to to get better, to maybe make some money if you if you get fortunate enough, uh, and, and just improve your craft. So yeah, absolutely. I could think of it like this. So uh, I've been very vocal about uh, CTFs recently, uh, and uh, I would have to like um, criticize myself. Uh, in this case, because uh, when I actually started uh, in the field, I was doing a lot of uh, Hack the Box, Bone Hub, and all the platforms. Uh, mm -hmm. And I was doing a lot of CTFs, and I kind of started bashing them, like most recently. Not necessarily bashing them, but criticizing them for the fact that a lot of them are unrealistic. And I actually stopped doing all that uh, playing on platforms. And I would say that a better exercise for me is to actually do back bounties in my spare time because that's the real thing. And if I get to find something, there's going to be something with impact and with potential uh, financial reward and sure. also with something that's useful to my experience in the real world compared to a CTF, which more often than not, I'm not saying that always, but more often than not is, is quite unrealistic. And uh, to add to that, there are platforms that have like more realistic scenarios. And even I think on Hack the Box, they have some labs that are uh, quite realistic. Uh, but I, I would prefer doing back bounties uh, as of this moment more than uh, playing a CTF. Yeah, and it's a CTF is a game, right? And bug bounties are real life. And that's, that's the big difference is you, you're up against an actual client and you can treat it like it's a real assessment and use every tool and knowledge that you have. And if you don't have the knowledge, you go pick something up and learn from it. Uh, a CTF is, is a game where it's a puzzle. It makes you think about how you're going to get from point A to point B. And it's great. Like, yeah, they're fun to do. Just like a going and doing an actual puzzle is fun to do. But at the end of the, end of the day, what are you actually getting out of it? Um, you know, besides just that satisfaction of completing a challenge. So I agree with you that a bug bounty, doing bug bounties over CTFs is, is much more advantageous.